Well, it's up YouTube. I'm going to be playing some Junda Shadow Splash White this morning. Similar to my last video with the Hazret one, but I decided to cut the Hazrets and uh, because I just Hazrets like Hazrets like so close, and I just can't figure out where exactly to 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 play it where it's really effective. Let me turn off my music here while we're while we're going. I can't, I can't figure out how to get Hazret to work. Like there are some times when Hazret's like insane. There are some times when Hazret's worse than Ranger Rios. And then there's some times when Hazret like doesn't like like I was playing Jun last night and I went and traversed for a Hazret when I couldn't even cast it because I knew that the game would go long. Sorry about this. I should have done this before I started streaming. And I knew that if I landed the Hazret, that um, that it was just going to like auto win me the game. I left my headphones at work, so you're going to have to tell me if the music's too loud or not. Because I can't play it out loud or it's going it messes up with like the recording and such but so like i can't figure out if the hazard's good or not these whispers are kind of like my friend's design here these might need to be some other card but i wanted to try them i added two more discard spells i just don't think you can play this deck especially without stubborn denial with the eight discard spells so i'm going to give this a whirl but we should be able to like throw around some combo decks. Like with two Whispers, four, eight discard spells, and two Lilianas. We should be able to handle it, but we're going to give it a whirl this morning. This is my sick draft deck that I just threw out with. My, my humble brags. So let's get into some modern. It was kind of frustrating. I would have 5 would last night had there not been a Moto bug. And I mean, I'll get compensated for the league, but it sucks that I, I get basically like I get less I get like two treasure chests less of value through my league um, through being compensated for the league instead of just like being 5-0 which does kind of suck but alas we we carry on with our with our program that we thoroughly love. Oh, shoot. All right, what am I looking up here? Tweaking out. I'm tweaking out this morning. Streaming Rival of Ixalan draft. So, hopefully, we can get some love here. Get some viewers. Because we are unique. Oh, I'm going to ship this again. This hand's not good enough. This hand's worse, but we'll keep it because one sets. Um, I'll put Tarfire on top. It's just another type, another way to interact. I can Tarfire myself. Yep, Tarfire is sick. So I'm going to go fetch Blood Crypt. Smoke this little moron. Pew. Get out of my face, you noble piece of garbage. And if they even play a Devoted Druid, yeah, we get the answer to that one too. Oh, we have removal spells for days. I think I'm just going to push this. Well, I might as well be mana efficient. Do I want to fetch shot? So 15, fetch to 13, fetch to 12. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm going to get overrun to him and terminate this moron. And then we hope to draw, like, Street Wraith or Bobble next to her. 
because then we've got Delirium online. We'll be able to go Traverse, probably a Grim Flare. Grim Flare is pretty good against a deck like this. That's good too. So I think I just want to kill this and play Goyf. Like, I think we just want to keep the board clear. It's going to suck if we get Company next turn. But. Four mana and passes. It smells like a collector company to me, and we drew a land. So I'm gonna attack because let's just say my opponent sets up some weird double block that kills my Tarmogoyf and I get Delirium. This is a matchup where not having a blue is going to hurt. Like being able to stub a company is just such a huge blowout. You just trade you trade resources really effectively. My opponent could have like a bunch of cords stuck in there, yeah, which would be good. Which is like something, if you want to like level up playing a company deck, when you're playing against Death Shadow, you should board out your Cord of Dawns. Because Cord is just, maybe not all of them. Okay, double devoted Druid. So my opponent's going to have mana up the Wazoo next turn. We could easily die here. Like they're going to get three looks. I guess like, one, two, three, four, five. This is a Cord. All right, if they got anything to do with it, then they got us. Like an Eternal Witness kills us. Um, a Duskwatch Recruiter kills us. And then you, let, you just let this happen on Moto. Because like, sometimes the, the Devoted Druid players, they just try to make a million mana and then help you concede. But this is like stupid. If you have a Walking Blitz, they just play it. And then you can do it with every you can do it with everything on the stat. Yeah. Yeah, we get we get smoked. And that's what you need. That's why the discard spells are really important. Because like I handled all of his little creatures, but I needed the discard spells in order to, um, in order to, I needed the discard spells in order to, what was I going to say? I needed the discard spells in order to hit like his haymakers. So in this matchup, I'm going to board out the forest. Um, then I have to board out one more card. Probably just like an Inquisition because I brought in the Brutalities. I could keep my I could board out like one more inquisition to keep my veils in, but then I have to board my land back in. Yeah, I think we're gonna go like this. Really honest, just not that great in this matchup, especially if they've got like birds. And this hand's great. This hand's got a discard spell, it's got Grim Flare, which is gonna get us delirium, and our opponent's well getting. So this game's like this game feels yeah, they're down to five. This game's very over. It's just like whenever you are a discard deck. And your opponent mulligans, and you have a discard spell, like, the game's pretty much over. Okay. Wooded Foothills. We don't need to draw any more of those. So. Tough take, because our opponent's going to be able to eternal witness back anything they do. I kind of just want to take a Brup Decay, because that base, that guaranteed means we get a hit in with Grim Flare. Though, we can just take Eternal Witness, have them decay Death Shadow next turn. Or we can just take Birds of Paradise to slow them down. Yeah, I'm going to take Bird. Well, that doesn't, Birds doesn't make any sense, because then my opponent just, they do this, they put a card on the bottom. I'm going to take Witness. And then I'm going to run out the Death Shadow. Depends on what I draw next turn, actually. Because my Grim Flare is going to get brick walled by this. Um, I guess it's not going because we got rid of the Eternal Witness. So, yeah, I'm going to definitely run out the other Shadow next turn. Alright, we don't need any, though, any more of those. So, 
We have the land this doesn't fetch, so it doesn't really matter. I guess we'll just lead off on this. Go get Blood Crypt. Tar Fire would have been sick there. Blood Crypt. Shadow. Alright, there's that. Devoted Druid, okay. So let's bobble ourselves. Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize will probably be good at some point. But. So I can just attack with Death Shadow. Traverse for another Death Shadow. Which I think is what I'm going to do. Of to hell with this thought sees. We're just gonna get aggressive. And then I'm gonna leave up my blood crypt in case I hit one of my two tar fires with three fatal pushes. Hopefully this isn't like a path. If this is a path, it'd be kind of annoying. I'm just going to be efficient, get another Death Shadow, let it pass. My opponent would have to hit Perfect Perfect to get us. They'd have to hit the Vizier into another combo piece because we know they have a Decay in their hand. Wow, that was a great draw. Opponent can still Company, which it looks like they're going to do, which is a little frustrating, but it's their entire turn. My opponent can actually kill me here. Okay, they didn't kill me. Alright, so we attack. My opponent's gotta chump one of these. And then we just go Tarma with Grim Flare. They probably chump with. Well, it might be Recruiter. Oh, okay, they're going there. I guess they can company anyways. Got like eight lethal threats. Grim Flare's got tramples, so you can't just chump that. So you think no okay command the board at all? No, I don't think well okay. Oh man. Yeah, we're not gonna make our opponent go through this. K command! Like, K command is not that that was just like super unfortunate. Like our opponent mulligan five, and they still got us there. But you know, this deck's powerful and redundant. Um, no, Lingering Souls is just a much better grindy card than K-Command. Like, K-Command's a grindy card that has uses against, like, Affinity and, uh, and whatever it is. Like, Affinity and Ensnaring Bridge. But if you're that worried about it... I don't know, do you think that it fills the grindy slot, or do you think it fills the K-Command spot? Because even if these whispers weren't even in play, I would play K Command. Yeah, Souls is much better than Colorless Command. It's just too slow. Like, if you think about it, you need at least four mana. Oh, I'm gonna keep my hand. You need at least four mana. Yeah. You put whispers instead. So I assume we're playing against the combo deck. We're going to have turn one Delirium, which is good. So if we do go land into Whispers, his hand's like insane. Street Wraith, okay. So let's do the Bobble Trick. Um, Inquisition. We don't, we want anything but a land at this point. So we're going to get our Overgrown Tomb. Cycle. Cyborg, yeah, the uh, the whatever it is, Duder might actually be good. So we're gonna play this so we can play Death Shadow next turn if we miss a land. So like Snapcaster Rage. Oh, we're playing the enemy. So this sucks because if I take Spreading Seas, my opponent lands a Gideon. But if we don't take Spreading Seas, then we can't do anything. So I'm gonna take Spreading Seas. 
This is the worst matchup in the format this time, I think. Yeah, Rallier's cool, but Rallier's also like your, um, what was I going to say? Rallier is your, I can't think. Rallier's like your ranger spot. Or the green souls. So I'm going to lead off with a death shadow, really hoping that my opponent watches not it. Because I, I need to thought seize this Gideon, or I'm in a lot of trouble. But I couldn't, like I couldn't not take the um I couldn't not take a spreading seeds because I didn't draw a land. Oh right, this is pretty good. This is good for the home team. No. Check out my opponent's top card. And then we hit the Gideon. I guess they couldn't really cast the Gideon, so maybe like maybe that was a little overzealous in my in my like ideas there. But they easily could play something like Mystic Gate, and then would be in trouble. Come on, dude. Let me bobble you. Let me bobble you. Yeah, so it's like not delirium half hymnotorac, delirium hymnotorac. Right, what do you got coming? We got a planes coming. The cool thing about playing two basics in this version is that we don't have to worry about getting like field of ruined off a of color. So, I can take Snapcaster. Gideon's just going to be like the biggest problem here. My opponent can like snap Serum Visions on their turn, but that's pretty mopey. So I think I'm just going to take Gideon. Gideon's like a way for them to win. Hey, Archmage. I usually listen at 2x, so now in person I always just feel like you're high. <laughs> that's funny. So now they probably, yeah, they snap into that. We play Grim Flare next turn. Well, now we can play. I still think I'm going to play Grim Flare into Fatal Push this moron. Get in, get some advantage. They went top, top, so that means this Cryptic is going to be online next turn. Let's check out one of their top cards just so that we know. Island. So we're getting low on life total for sure, but. I think I'm just going to push this Snapcaster now so that my opponent can't return it with Cryptic Command. And then they're going to Cryptic, probably, they probably have to tap this. I just need to hope they don't hit a Supreme Verdict. They'd have to hit White Source and Supreme Verdict, and they only have one unknown. But they did keep two on top. I'm going to hold my fetch land. Mismatch Islands. How was your class last night? I always hated late classes. I like early classes much more. I just like getting up, being more active. So that's interesting. So do I need this Teamer Battle Rage to cheese out the victory? I'm going to bait this Cryptic with my Tarmogoyf. Gets cryptic. Then I play Death Shadow. Death Shadow is 9 13. I think I'm just going to go for it next turn. So we're going to lead with Goyf. I assume Goyf gets cryptic. Cryptic. I have one class all day and then work. What Monday, Wednesday, Fridays? Yeah. So this gets commanded. Don't bounce my Grim Flare. That's sad. So now we just got to hope that my opponent doesn't have White Source Supreme Verdict. And we're like 100% going for it.
and partially we're going for it because we have another follow-up. And like my opponent just needs a very specific set of cards. Alright. Get our homeboy back into play. And like we're just roller skating in a buffalo herd here. Like we lose, we just straight up lose to Supreme Verdict, but we're like not really beating this deck most scenarios anyways. So Jace. Um put leak by itself, and then we go for the shot next time. Yeah, UW is like the worst matchup here, but but like, so what do they do? They put click and rev into their hand. So now we're just gonna like go for it. But like Death Shadow is so inherently powerful that sometimes it is going to beat its poor matchups. And we're just gonna pray to God there's no path to exile. Yep. Like, when you operate at such an efficient rate that this Death Shadow deck has, you get you have game against every deck. So we don't want Rages. We do want Whispers. I don't want any... I don't think I want any of my removal because I'm bringing in Fulminator Mage to handle Colonnade. I could see cutting, like, one Inquisition because they mostly have, like, bigger cards. And I do like having Collective Brutalities in because if they deal with my White Source, I can discard my Lingering Souls and still play them. Yeah. Well, so so blue white is really bad because you can't beat you can't. Well, he he means to say that they're digging for it. That's what he means to say. Like the fact that they're like going, to, they're putting the shields down on any counter magic basically means they're digging for an answer to a death shadow. I'm gonna keep tar fire in because I just do not feel comfortable. I still don't feel comfortable. I mean, maybe we can try it here. Maybe we can cut, like, a tar fire. Maybe we can cut the tar fires and bring in Inquisition Brutality. And it might be right to have more Inquisitions in my deck after sideboard because of, like, maybe we go like this because we want to have an answer to Rest in Peace. Yeah, they, they, would, have, they would have messed with my mana base if they could have. It's going to be interesting to see, and we should like know, you know, how reliable my because this card is like this card is stone unplayable if you don't have delirium. The card is very good if you do have delirium. So we've got to know to see if we can support it without our tar fires in. So that's what we're that's what we're checking out this morning. Alright, we got a good one. I'm not going to fetch a white source yet. But. How do you feel about Tremere Traverse do? Because instants are hard to use in this matchup. I could Traverse. Yeah, that, that's something I could have done. I could have Traverse. Or I could have hit like a Traverse or two. My opponent Mulligan? Nice. They put a card on the bottom. I could have... All right, so now I think I still get well. So now I get the white source, I think, because I want to cast lingering souls on three. This is all a mistake. I sequenced this poorly. Like I was looking at the chat here, I should have led on swamp. But now we're gonna go get the godless shrine, and like we could definitely lose this game for lack of sequencing issues. Mm hmm So like now we have to take spreading seas, which is okay. Like we're cool taking spreading seas. I really like taking spreading seas in this matchup because I find spreading seas like allows the deck to keep rolling. Okay, so they're gonna be able to sphere. So we're gonna take sphere within with this discard spell. One, two. Alright, so that doesn't do that doesn't do anything on this point, but also it's important to know that like only draws with bobble and um, Street Wraith get us Delirium on two. So, like, let's not be too difficult on this card. Take the Sphere, and... 
I guess we're going to shock ourselves in the pass. Yeah, I'll play the path to exile versus... Um, the, the, now, the big question is here, should my opponent just field it? My power power is just field it with me. Which is like, again, we go back to the sequencing issues that I had on turn two here. Oh, that's a, that is a rip, to say the least. Um, so I think I just cast like on these holes. I really hope that my opponent does not feel the villain me next time. Yeah, I mean, you can't play, can't play off the top. Don't field the movie. Come on. I mean, that's a good play from our opponent. I shouldn't get too salty about that. It's what they should do. And that, again, like, so that I probably can't beat that field of ruin. So, question here: Do I get my Liliana in play? They have double path to exile. So they theoretically can go path, path, kill my Liliana, and then they use two resources. I have Delirium, but I have a dead Ranger of Eos. So I think, I think I'm just gonna attack for one here and flash back my Lingering Souls. This is pretty cold to um, Supreme Verdict, but my opponent needs land Supreme Verdict out of their top two, out of their one random card and draw step in order to really get me. Yeah, I say knowing this that I enjoy playing against Thoughtseize. That's his word. Yeah, Jace would be vomit inducing. That's bad as well. That's probably game as well. So we'll pass through here. So they've got path, path. Turn off auto yields. Because we've got to fetch a basic. we got to fetch a tap land here. So now we just cast Liliana to gain four life. Yeah, that was that was better than the verdict. You are you are right for sure. Um So I probably just don't even show them this Ranger. Like, they probably know that it's there, but you know, there's just no need. I don't think that we're gonna win this game. They, have, they still have Path Path, so they go attack me. I can't even play and flash back my Green Souls. Okay, they kill Liliana. Well, at least I get to him them. So if we draw Lingering Souls, if I him them, then I can't cast Lingering Souls through this now. So basically now I have to like him them, draw Death Shadow, hopefully hit both of their Path to Exiles. So we need we need two paths. We only hit one path. Um, I'm still just cast it, like it's not, it's not doing anything. Well, yeah, I know they can just up to Gideon on Shadow, but we're playing to like, what we've got here. You know, like, how we win is they brick and we hit. Probably for the rest of the game. Which they bricked. So like, they need to like, brick now, hit another land, we need to hit a way to deal with... There's our creature, so there's step one. And now we need to hit, like, a, a Fulminator Mage for this colony. They need to continue drawing lands, and we need to deal with this. Search for this contact. That's bad. This card is so good. This card is just disgusting. We'll pass. So if my opponent hits a land, they flip search, they attack with colony, and they get me. No land. I really don't like this that play. I mean, I guess I guess I really don't like that play for my opponent keeping this on top. I think you just go for a land, you go to animate colonnade. Like they get to do it next turn. So now we need Fulminator Mage. No, they got it. 
They've got it. Dude, Ascanta is sweet. Like, I, I love... This card's awesome. So, do I want to sideboard any differently? I guess I should have made them do it, but, like, any Magic player worth their salt is going to go for it there. They don't even blow it, though. Even if they get pushed, they just animate, take up on Tarmogoyf, and then, like, I guess I could have played my other Tarmogoyf. I guess I got a little excited about the concession. All right. Um, I don't think I want anything differently. I'm going to go like this. I guess that makes sense as well. Because Wang Chung, he can, uh, he animates his colonnade and kills me, which I should have made him do it. You know, that's my mistake. All right, we're going to keep this. We're going to bobble ourselves. We're, again, we're going to open ourselves up to get Field of Ruin, but we can, we can at least get ahead of Field of Ruin here. Yeah. This is a good hand. This gets us stomping ground more than likely. Karma life. One, two, I think we want another Tomahawk. Which means we're pretty locked into taking a rest in peace. Rune Halo, Spreading Seas. So this is a good hand. The Spreading Seas is so annoying, but then is this, so is this Rune Halo. Because they just ruined Halo my goyf. Yeah. I gotta take Rune Halo. I'm going to get this Spreading Seas on two, but they might Spreading Seas my green source, which would probably be worse. It's a good hand from our opponent. We don't have any Buff Decays in this list. Island into Serum Visions. I'm pretty excited to play some Standard on Sunday. I think that I will be able to rent cards by then. So wait, what do we have in our deck for red cards? We actually don't have any red cards in our deck, so I can just go get Overgrown Tomb, which gives me, if they like, Spreading Seas my green source, I still have a, well, if they Spreading Seas my white source, I still have a black land. So I'm not stuck with just Stomping Ground. Yeah, Spreading Seas is not going to be good here. I mean, I assume they're casting it. Oh, I, I X'd out, X out one of their cards. There's one more card they have that I don't know. Alright, so now just go attack, play another Goyf. Well, these decks do play Rest in Peace. Like... This deck is such weird de deck building. Like, they, they play Rest in Peace, but you've got Search, you've got like two Snapcasters, and they have Logic Hunt. That's the card they X out of. Um, so I guess I just Whispers them. I could go, like, ditch my Death Shadow, and then Whispers with Delirium. Yeah. Bones on a two turn clock, anyways. So, like, I, I got, I'm gonna whisper them. The thing is, like, do I just go for it? Into six open mana. Do I. But, like, I guess I've got. We're gonna attack first. Well, no, I should whispers first. Because I could hit something that pumps Tarmogoyf. This leads me to think that my opponent has some sort of interaction here because they didn't play Search. Though this is also bad because it gives my opponent... Okay, that's fine. It gives my opponent the chance to... Um, it did give my opponent a chance to, like, 
Rune Halo. Wow, that's gross. Or to uh, Logic Knot and Shrink My Tarmogoyce. So we hit an island. So we know that they have a search and two unknowns. So we're just going to play out a Death Shadow, a small little Tyke. Alright, Spreading Seas. I feel like this is the best card in their deck. Like, this makes the deck go. Okay, search. So we have two cards. Karma looks a good draw, so we're going to get him for one. And, like, it's not even that bad if we get Verdicted, because if we do get Verdicted, it turns on our Traverse. People hate Mana League. It's better than, like, game by reality. That makes sense. It is this deck has a really cool angle of being able to mess with mana bases, which probably like makes it viable. You can snap path. Go bottom bottom. Gideon. Alright, so we rip a fetch land, we can merc this Gideon. Which is going to be important to us surviving. Okay, so we do get to merc Gideon. And seven. So I think we shot. Get that. And then what does this do? This makes Tarmogoyf a seven, eight. And then, uh, yeah, we're just going to go for it. We're going to hope no Supreme Verdict one time. I could Fulminator them. What does Fulminator Mage do? I could get Fulminator Mage. You like blowing up their filter. That also just cuts them off of more cards, like I assume if my opponent had a Supreme... I guess if they had Supreme Verdict, they would have played. Because now they need Untap White Source Supreme Verdict. Yeah. This says Kanta's going to flip, which... is going to, like, negate the mana that I'm constricting from them. But it is going to, like, give them some color problems. So I kept the card on top. Don't verdict me. Yeah, this game's over. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll pass. I mean, we have some outs. Like, Liliana's going to let us ditch our Lingering Souls, at least. And if we can get some pressure going on, at least our opponent is going to be, like, constrained on activating this as Kanta. Yeah, it ain't good. Well, we're going to give it like two or three draw stats. Because we hit a Liliana, we're in business. We're, we're not like in business, but we're at least playing the game. Spreading seeds. So that cuts us off double black, which means Liliana's no longer an out. Because I don't think we play another black source. I usually play two overgrown tunes, but this list only has one. So, and they can search. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. So there we like went for it, and our opponent got us, you know, but we put ourselves in a position to win, which. In a bad matchup like that, if we're in a position to win, that's where it's at. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I but like this deck top decks really well, and I, I've definitely top decked some people out of some games. Whatever you just Death Shadow decks top deck really well because you just have like 
And when you like, when you're playing Grixis in the late game, can trip top decks are good. You know, one mana eight eights are good top decks and the Delph creatures. When you're playing these Death Shadow decks, like you just have so many raw threats that you're just able to top deck really well to start. So it's just the nature of Death Shadow decks. Like as long as you can manage your life total to get to a point where Street Race is live, most of your top decks are good. Except you do get the discard spell problem. Like you definitely get. I hate how you can't move it when you're in the screen. Yeah, Emma Handy is a part of the the card hoarder network, so I appreciate her her host there. I guess I should. I hate how I don't have my second. I left my uh, second monitor or my my computer connector to my monitor at home, but. Thanks everyone, we have 26 viewers. I hope that everybody's having a good time. Everyone's having a good day today. Um, if you'd like to, I'd like to just plug my sponsors here. Like if you're in the Northern New York area, Gamer Craze is a very good store that has you know competitive single pricing and something that you should definitely look into. And they're just a great store in general. They have games, they have, they got everything there. Um, if you need uh, singles from Magic Online, Card Hoarder is the best bot chain in the business. They've got um, they got good prices, and they do a lot for the community. And if you'd like to see any part of this stream that you've missed, you can go check out my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to connect with me just to chit-chat about magic in general, you can uh, check out my Twitter, which is also linked below. Uh, this hand is pretty good. I don't recognize my opponent's name. They're on the mulligan. All about the troll train. Nice name. I actually need to, Johnny, if you're still here, what's your friend's name that I banned that was your fault? I should fix that. Let's hope we're playing against Jess Guy, not Blue White. All right. Worst land in the deck is Wooded Foothills, so we're going to lead off with that. Go get Overgrown Tomb. Overruns in my hand. See, like I, I keep messing up with that because this list plays one. Yeah, let's hope to God that this is what they do. They put it on the bottom. I really hope this is Jess Guy, and it is. Well, it might be like a blue red deck of some sorts, but we'll get this spell snare so we can clear the way for our Garmatoif. Island. So I'm going to assume that this is a Blood Moon deck of some sort now. So if I get a chance to fetch my basic forest, I should. Corp on turn two should be lethal. That is the plan. If we can fetch a basic forest, we should be in really good shape. That's a good draw as well. And that's just the really sweet part of this deck. Like, Oh, we got a new got a new YouTube subscriber. If you're on the Twitch channel and you just did that, thank you very much. You should definitely speak out if that's what you did. God, they hit a remand. That's gross. All right, just don't hit a blood moon. Don't moon me. I'm getting mooned. Getting mooned. We could have beaten that by fetching here, but. Now we gotta draw basic, basic forest. Yeah, we're we're not gonna play through a blood moon. And yes, I could play a little longer to get exact information about what my opponent's playing, but I'm not about that life. I would rather just jam more games and get in there. If we were playing like a legit tournament, I would have played that all the way out. So the more popular version of this deck is the um whatever it is the through the breach deck so i'm gonna board like we're playing against through the breach and i'm gonna keep in my tar fires just to hedge a little bit and then keep whispers going on i don't love like i don't think i need battle rage in this matchup but i don't have blue counter spells so i might want battle rage i'll probably just cut a street wraith just so that we don't 
get messed around on the burnout plan. We also want to keep tar fires in so that we have a hedge against like young pyromancer or mom or pop. So I might not want these extractions. So like, was it reasonable, Joey? Yes, but that's wrong most of the time because I do want to deal with damage to myself because if I go like, I don't remember the exact remnants of my hand, but you know, obviously you play Death Shadow 2. With play patterns, you can go like, fetch, fetch, thought sees Death Shadow, fetch, fetch, street wraith Death Shadow. So like, I can't remember the exact remnants of my hand, so. Oh, John Doe, thank you very much. Um, I don't remember the exact remnants of my hand. So like, I can't determine whether that was exactly accurate or not. So, you know, we'll obviously do that in this game, but I think that's wrong to do with just the normal play patterns of Death Shadow. And I shouldn't be, I don't think, I don't think it's correct to play around Blood Moon when you see Flooded Strand. So the question is, is do I want to hedge? And I don't think I want to hedge here. We're on the play. I think I just want to be able to put my head down and tell my opponent to like fuck themselves. Excuse my language. It's early and I don't have my, uh, I don't have my, my barrier on yet. So this hand is like kind of okay because I can go bobble into the, into uh, traverse, get my black source and then play a Tarmogoy if it's not multiple. So I think I'm going to keep this hand. Opponent needs to hack themselves, yeah. So I'm actually going to bobble myself. If my top card is a land, I'm just going to draw it. And if it's not a land, then I'm going to traverse for another, uh, a traverse just for my swamp. So yeah, we're going to just traverse for a swamp. And now we're moonproof. My opponent might have like next leveled us by taking out their moons, which, you know, good on you. Good on you, opponent. Joey, what are you looking at when it comes to standard? Now that we're energied out. I think I'm like I think on Saturday, on Sunday, I'm gonna play a blue-black control deck, and I'm gonna play a black-green counters deck. Oh, we go sideboard, sure. All right, so now we get now we get big man in play, the man, the myth, the legend, the Garmatoy. What do they do with this? They went. They put a card on top. Top. So let's check out what they got on top. Still probably going to lead off with this fetch land because I'm pretty much locked in, I think, to casting Liliana next turn. I was actually thinking about doing it. Like, I've got a... Uh, I 3 0 this morning with this absolute hog of a deck. Check this out. I drafted it last night and then um, and then 3 0 with it. I might have made a mistake not playing this card in my main deck. I sided it in a couple times. I sided this in. It was a good sideboard card in all the grindy matchups. I think people tended to. I don't know what it's about, but I think people tended to slow down a little bit. Yeah, this deck was sick. Like I, I hit, I I pack one, pick three. This. I pack, I pack three, pick two. This. I pack one, pick one. This. And then I pack two, pack one, pick two. This. So like, it was just an absolute slaughtering. Like, and then I got both of these in the, like, the end of or before before the wheel in pack three. What I was worried about is I had a shitload of three drops, which I was not really excited about. These were the only non-two vampires in my deck. And I think that it was worth... I think these cards... These cards are very... I actually played one Rapture Companion because I wanted a two-drop. You know, this was, like, by far the worst card in my deck because it had one toughness. 
Maybe I should have played 17, but I wasn't sure to cut. I really like this con I really like this one mana combat trick. I think if I would have cut a card, it would have been this. I cut a couple Queen's Commissions. But I just didn't want more threes was my idea behind that. Alright, let's cycle this. We'll draw Whispers. We have Thought Seas. Okay, so what do I want to do now? I think I just want to go Inquisition into Grim Flare, because that's going to give me Delirium. I didn't think it was that. I mean, I'm like... So, like, I'm not a very good limited player, and, like, that's one of the things that I want to get better at in... 2018, but I like it, you know? I mean, I don't mind, like, I much, I like limited formats that are like, let me draft a curve. Alright, so what do we want to do here? I kind of just want to take this Snapcaster Mage and then land Grimflare, and like, if my opponent takes the third turn off Blood Mooning me, they're probably dead. Yeah. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Got it. We're gonna keep our life total nice and high. My opponent can like double bolt one of my creatures, but then they don't play Blood Moon, and then I get to land Liliana. So like, I don't really care about this moon, which is kind of a cool part about this version of the deck. When you play, like, if you're not playing the five color one, because if you're playing the five color one, you really can't play that many. Um, we're going to get Blood Crypt. I guess I might as well get... What do I have for red cards? I have Tarfire, Team of Battle Rage, so I'm going to get Blood Crypt. In case they don't moon us, I'd like to be able to cast it. Because you actually can, like, blank Blood Moon with this deck, which is nice. Which makes it so you don't really have to play Decay. <coughs> it is kind of stupid that all of like the two drops have evasion. Like there's the two one fly, there's a two one blue pirate if you're attacking it flies. There's obviously the red card from the, the two drop merfolk from um, Sanctum Seeker I think it is. The one that if you're, if you have a merfolk it flies. RTV and Joe. That's going to be a much harder RPG view. We're going to get double bolted, which is like fine. So what do they do? They ditch the scalding charm. Okay, so you're seeing origins. So next turn, we just play Liliana and take it out. My opponent definitely should have killed Grim Player. Like, that, that was a mistake. Moto is lagging. I'm going to have to restart Moto. If I can just go Thoughtseize, Death Shadow, hold my Liliana. But I think I want to get my Liliana in play. I don't really want to go. So I'm definitely going to Fetch Shock. I could just not do anything with my Liliana. But that's kind of mopey in the face of Snapcaster Lightning Bolt. Te Tetsumok is stupid. And so is Olivia. But, like, Tetsamok is ridiculous. The fact that... I'm going to fetch an Overgrown Tomb, and I'm probably just going to play Liliana Tick Up and discard my Thoughtseize. I could play Liliana Tick Up Death Shadow. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm stupid. I don't know. I'm, I'm talking crazy talk here. And then we're just going to put our opponent to the test. But Tetsamok... Has Bomb. Their own pressure. You, they can play. If your opponent has a Bomb of their own, and enough pressure, they can play around Tetsamok. But, like, can you really play around Tetsamok? You know, because it's just miserable. Because, like, you know, they, like, it's just, like, super miserable. I don't know. I think it's really miserable to play against. Um, yeah, we're just going to draw another Grim Flare. We don't want any of these Traverses. And is it just better to, like, Thoughtseize pitch this Death Shadow? I think it is. Like, we're just gonna, like, we're just gonna pick our opponent's hand apart. 
Like, whatever. This Death Shadow is probably going to die to a Lightning Bolt. And we got Grim Flare on top, so I'd rather just do that. But yeah, I mean, the limited format is, is very much my style of play. It's okay, so they are the Through the Breach ones, so we did guess right. So we're going to get rid of that, and then we're going to go up. And then we're just going to, we're basically going to put the Squeeze on our opponent, because we're going to get a card out of their hand every single turn, and they need to draw both. Like, this game's way over. Yeah, but you can just, like, chump. Like, you can go, like, two, like, so in turn, whatever. On turn one, you know, you play your dude. Turn two, you play a two drop. They play a two drop. Turn three, you go, like, Tetsu Mark, mark your dude, play another two drop. And then you don't even have to attack. The Dalkin Shackles. The Dalkin Shackles. I, so I just randomly forget how good this card is, and I just lose to it all the time. So they've got Blood Moon. What do they do their Blood Moon? Their Blood Moon's in play. I just like randomly lose to this card. Like I forget how good this card is. Yeah. It's just miserable to play against. The nice thing is that I can at least like edict something here. So now I need just threats. Okay, so the Brutality should do it, because even if they steal my Grim Flare, they steal it in combat, which is difficult, actually. Maybe I don't want any of these cards. Since 0201. Well, nice. What are you looking to do? Uh, what, John Doe? John, John Zero? I don't know how you like to pronounce that. So what does the Brutality do? Uh, say the Wayfire makes the card go. Yeah, but the only deck that's got, like, really good 1, 2, 3, 4 curves is, like, Merfolk. I think I want to discard both of these Thought Seizes, make them top deck a land. If they don't top deck a land, if they, like, take this on their main phase, then... This is tough. Maybe I don't want all of these. Because, like, if my opponent top decks a land, they steal it in combat. But I guess that the turn after that, I can edict and attack. So, yeah, we're going to do the. We're going to keep the brutality. Yeah, I only play against the shackles like three times a year. And whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, whatever. That card doesn't matter. And then, like, I just lose to it immediately. So discard them. I want to decide to build. Grimflare is really cool. You could probably play Grimflare and Sator Wayfinder if you really wanted to. Meanwhile, Meg knows what's up with Shackles. Oh my god. Well, they, I guess they knew that was there. All right, so now we just nug our opponent. That was also stupid, because if I would have kept this card, then I wouldn't have been able to tick my Liliana up. And at least now I can deal with this Vidalcan Shackles. Yeah, that was just stupid. Yeah, my wife does. My wife is a uh, the good old Shackles boss. So when I play around, Cryptic Command. I think I do. Like, alternatively, I could just eat it now. I could just minus six and not keep my Liliana around. Which I think is just like the safest thing to do. And I have to get this Shackle off the board. I can give them shackles in one land. Which I think I, I don't think they can keep shackles in one land. So what if I go like shackles in mountain? 
But then they just easily keep these. If I keep, sh if I give them shackles and steam vents, what do they do? You go shackles with mountain and island because it just kind of shuts them off what they're doing. They can still activate the shackles, but they can only take one ones. Yeah, I like this. This tar fire is kind of neat. Like, if my opponent does fetch, which the odds are they're going to need to fetch at some point. Alright, show me a tarnal order. Alright. Look at this reach we have. Hopefully we don't get. What could this be? This could be remand. They would have remanded that. I think we're just going to go for it. No, it's correct to upkeep this. Like, they would have remanded it there, probably, but it's still correct to just do this now. Brute, brute off the top. Hey, man, what, we knew one of them was there. Uh, Rand, Rand Pin, Vim... I can't pronounce that to save my life. Thank you very much for the follow. Let me see if I missed anybody. John Doe, thank you very much. I don't have my headphones, so I, I can't hear the alerts, which is a little frustrating. So, say, I'm not going to say suck it, dude. I'm going to restart Moto after this game. So, yeah, I'm going to keep with the same idea. I like this I like this configuration, especially if our opponents like... We didn't see a lot of creatures, so... I wonder if my opponent boards out. Bear moons. Nathan, this is a chat of gentlemen. This is a gentleman stream. Alright. I think we can do better than this. We did. Marginally. We cannot fetch our basic. We could have fetched our basic there. But I think it's probably just worse than not drawing in the land. I'm definitely going to have to restart Moto in between games because we have that lag city here. We only wish our opponents endless hydration and focus for the coming. <laughs> yeah. GLHF. So we're going to see how they fetch because they have to fetch a red source anyways. I'm probably I'm just going to tar fire them in the time. What do we got? Show me the goods. This is like an engineer explosives for two. Yeah, it's definitely the for two. Or like a thing in the ice. Young Pyro. Okay. That sucks, but. So I'm still gonna go stomping ground, tar fire them. And then I think I'm still gonna play out my Tarmogoyf. Because um, if they blow up my Tarmogoyf, it gives me Delirium for my Grim Flare. And I don't want to play the Grim Flare before I had Delirium. And I don't think it's worth Collective brutality and just not adding to the board. I really want to draw... Now I want to draw the Virgin Catacombs. Alright, so are we adults? Because we can just say screw it, they don't have it, and not worry about the moon, or we can just like save ourselves from the moon. And I think the right thing to do is to just save ourselves from the moon. Like this is very much an adult. Like I don't want to do this, but it is what what I think is right to do. We have delirium, which is gas. Yes. Twenty six viewers. I hope everyone's having a great time. This morning, and I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. He doesn't have the blood moon. We're punished. Grossly punished. And we'll be ripping land like, a, like an animal. Alright, get our homeboy into play. 
Wow, man, Moto is just like losing its mind. God, I'm out, I'm out of coffee too. I'm super pumped. Starting a month, we're gonna have a dog on stream, which I'm excited about. We're getting a we're getting a black lab, which is awesome. I have I have pictures of them. Should have fetched. So I had F six. Now I'm gonna actually brutality my opponent. Because like if they're sitting on a cryptic command or a through the breach, I do wanna like check it out. Yeah, dude, check this pupper out. Bolt, bolt, snap, cast a mage. So they can go bolt, snap, bolt, and get rid of my Grim Flare, which is a little sad, to say the least. So we take a bolt, and now I probably just fetch. I wonder if I even shock. Because if I shock, my if I shock, I'm just trading this lightning bolt, and my opponent's just gonna go bolt snap bolt. Anyway, so I probably just let him do it. I should have fetched last turn, obviously. So if I shock go to 14, bolt snap bolt puts me to eight, snapcaster puts me to But then I just so shock, bolt snap. Bolt, Snapcaster, Bolt. So they just do that anyways, and there's nothing that I can do about it. Alternatively, I can go Snap Bolt and then hold that up. So I don't, I don't think, or I can just trade it for my Grim Flare, which leaves me like way ahead on life total. Again, I'm getting punished for just f 6 through my last turn. I was chit chatting with the world. So, do I want is Grim Flare worth? for life, because I'm going to shock the play. I don't think it is. Bolt, Snapcaster, Bolt puts me to 8, Attack puts me to 6, my opponent's top deck. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's worth it. Not going to play Grimflare, going to try to land Grimflare next turn. Lead off with a thoughts with an Inquisition. My opponent didn't go for that there, which is interesting. My opponent could through the breach snap casting mage for some value. <coughs> Cascade blows. Okay. Ooh. Is that good? So I get to clear my opponent's hand now, basically. Lead off with this, because this can get in. We're going to name him Philly, because my wife and I got engaged in Philadelphia. So that's, that's what we're going with. Little Philly. We have Snapcaster Mage coming in. Here he is, the Snapcaster himself. So then this, and then he bolts me. And I probably just play Wooded Foothills. And he just casts it, which is good, because this means Grim is going to stick. Bolts. So now they just have two lands. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying it out. Like I like the card. Okay. So now it's we're not going to whispers our opponent. We're just going to get this and then kind of chuckle at them for just thoughtsy or just lightning bolting so liberally. And we're probably going to still whispers them next turn because if they ever draw a lighthouse, them having less cards in hand is going to make the lighthouse. Um, Worse.
And like you can't take it home. You know, we might as well just cast our cards. This will also bait any interaction from our opponent. That's not a bad draw. And I'll probably just rage now anyways. We got through the breach. I'll probably just rage because um, I want to like look for that many cards. And like, it's at a point where I know rage is gonna resolve, which then makes an, if I find my other rage, then that's lethal. So yeah, we're, we don't, and like, I don't want my opponent to go like cryptic bounce Grimflare when I rage. So I think it's just good to cash this in. I get to look at six cards. I literally want all of these cards. Do I want the Veil? I guess Veil's not super great because they're top decking and so am I. And I'd much rather be like linear and just like dumpster my opponent. Getting well, getting good. Yeah, a lot of people don't don't do that. I don't think I want this Veil. I think I just want to play to the board. Though Veil shuts off them going like draw a card into draw like draw Duder into into uh, other moron. So I guess I can take my time. There's no need to get like too aggressive here. So I think I'm actually gonna bin. Bin Goyf. I, mean, I probably should have binned Rage if, if we're taking this line. So here's the line of play. We basically make our opponent attack next turn. We make our opponent block. So is it worth the Liliana or the Teamer Battle Rage? Which one do we want on top? Because this kills them if they don't block. This locks them out of the game. I think either card is winning. And I think I'm going to play... I think I'm going to take the Liliana. Because I think that the Liliana... Like, this is going to kill my opponent. And the Liliana just locks them out of the game. And I'm going to draw the Teamer Battle Rage the turn after. So that I can kill my opponent through, like, a P and K. We're just going to lock the game up here. I, I'm going to keep both, uh, Rick, but I just want to know which one I want to draw first. That's that's like the whole thought here. This that's what we're that's what we're debating. Oh, so this probably this more than likely means my opponent drew something. Good. So let's. So I think I tick up, because even if my opponent goes cryptic, bounce this Grim Flare, I'm going to attack first before I tick up. Oh, they just conceded. But see, the thing that we should I should have attacked before doing anything, so I missed sequence here. But because now if my opponent has a Lightning Bolt, they get to trade the Lightning Bolt for the um, Liliana. I should have attacked, like I just sequenced poorly here. I should have attacked first. Like, baited anything out, then played Liliana and ticked up, because even if my opponent goes, like, bounce your Grim Flare, discard Grim Flare, then I still get in for four. So, yeah. All right, let me change up. Let's put the sponsor page up here. And then let's restart Moto. I hate now that I left my connector at work, because then you guys can see, like, that crap. Um set up there. 25 years this morning. I hope everyone's having a good time and a good morning. My name is uh, Dylan Hovey and you've wandered onto my stream. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. It is like, doesn't cost you anything. It's easy to do and it's the best way to like popularize my channel. I mostly stream modern here, but I'm pretty excited to play some standard and I might do a draft later. I don't know. I do like the new format. I, I like getting in there and beating, beating down, being aggressive. 
Uh, if you want to, if you're in the upstate New York area, you should check out Gamer Craze. They've got super uh, good prices on singles because they foster like a college environment. Uh, Card Hoarder is the best bot chain in the business. Their podcast is great. Their team's great. Their prices are great. So you should look into them. If you ever miss part of my stream, want to see the archives, you can check it out on YouTube. And the best way to see your deck on here is to either, you know, donate the league for it, and I'll play whatever it is as long as I'm within my card order limit. And if you just interact with me on Twitter, like, I will play your deck. You know, like, let me know. Like, just talk to me about Magic, and I will play something that you enjoy. Like, I played a Soul Tide Death Shadow deck because somebody was chatting with me on Twitter about it, and I played this Jun Death Shadow deck because somebody was chatting with me about it. So before the next match pops, I'm going to check my work email. Just make sure I didn't get anything, and then we're going to jump back in. Nobody wants to talk to me for work, which is good. So let's put this back on the stream. You can look at the bug list. You can look at Stream Decker, and you can see the list that I played. And you also can check out uh, my Twitter or uh, my Imgur, which is Imgur. I don't know how to say it. Which is uh, which shows up here in a bot plug every I don't know. 45 minutes or so. I did not like it. I think that, like, it's just strictly worse than any other version of the deck that plays Lingering Souls, and not having Ancient Red was hard. I'm gonna grab some water, actually. Is that how you say it? I have no idea. But I upload all the decks that I play on there. I would like to play first. Um, so this is one of those hands that I think you have to play when you play Death Shadow. You have to keep. You've got like discard spell, removal spell on one. You have a redraw. So it's just like something that you're not, you're not like, you're not proud of this hand. It's like riding a moped. Like, you're not proud of it, but you gotta do it when you need to get to work, you know what I mean? I still get thrown off so much this deck does not have a second overgrown tomb, but that's probably something that I can get used to. Dose Quarter. Well, that's bad. That's real bad. We're probably playing against Death and Taxes, yeah. All right, so what matters? These vials, because there's two of them, they don't matter. I think this path is really what matters. I think we can just beat through all this crap. It's either the path or I take Tide Hollow Sculler, but I can kill Tide Hollow Sculler. The problem with that is Tide Hollow Sculler turns on Wasteland Strangler. So my opponent needs, I would rather have them have path and give me another land. So I'm actually gonna take Tide Hollow Sculler. All zero moped. Yeah, I mean, the cost of doing business. Yep, there's a vial. Land. Shoot. All right, I'm going to take now. Now I'm probably just going to take Thalia because that card's like really annoying to play through. Like, Tarfire checks this. If I get path, I'm not really worried about it. And it's not like they're going to be able to neg 3 8 neg 3 8 my creatures. And that's a couple turns off. So Path is just the most annoying card. Right. I'm just excusing Thalia with the annoying card. But Path is what's going to deal with my creatures. And if I can just get a creature set up, then we're in good shape. There's the Vile. 
And again, this is like the cost of doing business playing Death Shadow. Like, you're going to draw these like weird hands where, you know, you, you're going to draw these weird hands where uh, you got to keep these one landers and then sometimes it just doesn't happen. You just don't get there. But if we draw a land, we're still in business. Yep, here comes the here comes that that lady. Bob, okay, now we need a land. Alright. That was the best draw on our deck. Get that thing out of here. My time of is huge. I thought it should be Ghost Court in this thing. Hopefully we hit a land. We hit a land, we get to go Death Shadow and Tarmogoyf, which is going to be awesome. We even drew another Tar Fire, so we can deal with this, this lovely lady. Alright, now I'm just going to get Tarmogoyf into play. Though, Grim Flare is going to dig me to advantage, and I can deal with one of their blockers. So Grim Flare is going to provide me more value, though if they Ghost Quarter my red source, Tarmogoyf is better, so we're going to play Tarmogoyf. Color man, color scoopers, man, scoop. Turn around to go to the highest. You have two greedy decks here. This deck is greedy. Like you're playing a three color deck, and you know you're just playing a three color deck. Like, and you've got four land. You have no fetch lands. That's annoying, but we still have the bigger card. The problem is they're we can't really attack now because they can process me. My vote one hundred should take one hundred percent should take Tarpa. Or Grim Flare. I think. Death Shadow is like a later game card game, but it's annoying. But if they don't take one of these threats and I draw a land, they're in like they're in a lot of trouble. Okay, that's a good play. So I can't play I can't play Death Shadow next turn. Because I just get wasteland strike away. I also can't block this. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to force this so that my opponent can't um, Wasteland Strangle me in combat. So then this Tarmogoyf holds down the battlefield. Because if I don't do this, I then can't block this Thought Knot Seer because he just Neg 3, Neg 3 is my Tarmogoyf. So this play does look pretty odd, but it's also going to like enable my Death Shadow next turn. This just means as long as my opponent doesn't find a removal spell that my Tarmogoyf is going to rule the roost, opponent should go score me. We're going to get a black source. Maybe I should get a green source to play around the second, because um, having green in the deck is more important than any other color. Oh, is this a Flicker Wisp? Feels like a, it's a Displacer, that's even worse. Yeah, this placer just kills us. Just boom. Which is sad. But, you know, sometimes that's that's what you sign up for. So, this matchup. I really like my main deck configuration here. I probably can shave on some discard spells. I'm going to cut the whispers because they likely bring in rest in peace. Which probably means I can shave, like, a traverse. And then maybe I want to get bigger with, like, a ranger of Eos. But that means like keeping my white source is gonna be a little more difficult. But I think it's I think it's worth it. Like the ranger is really good. I don't like lingering souls against Thalia. I'll bring another brutality because it's a removal spell. I don't like Lily really on the draw in this matchup, so I'm gonna sideboard a little drastically different next round. But I'm expecting a I wanna keep in all my one mana discard spells because I really want to hit a rest in peace. And with this deck not having abrupt decay, there's no answer to it in the main deck. But I do want this Ranger in order to just beat my opponent like into submission. I'm gonna have to play around Leon and Arbiter. Like this my deck's worse against Leon and Arbiter, but we've still got we got five five one mana removal spells, two, and then three two mana removal spells that kill Leon and Arbiter. 
So like we are kind of setting us up for a rough time here, but we, we know what we're doing and we just have to be cognizant of it. Yeah, this hand's good. So we're gonna bobble ourselves to check our top card. If we like our top card, we're just gonna fetch with Dotsies. If we don't, we're gonna, well, we might, so this might get us, we might just want stopping ground with this. So I might just bobble my opponent and hit them with this. I'm not sure that I want to, and if like, even if I draw a land, it's not even that bad because it's gonna enable Death Shadow and like it's gonna get us to our three mana plays. So yeah, this is what we're gonna do. So they have a Tide Hollow Skuller on top. Card is obnoxious. So I have to take Mirror and Crusader. Because I just can't, I can't beat that card. Oh, my opponent can't cast any of their spells in their hand. That sucks. Alright, that's not a bad draw. It's going to allow us to, like, start chewing through these Tide Hollow Skullers. I wish I knew what was coming. But I actually, I'd have to get Black Red to do that in order to double Thought Seize. So actually, I think I can just go Inquisition, take a Tide Hollow Skuller, play this. Then I can like stop and ground Tar Fire or something if my opponent gives me that chance. I'll draw the temple. I'm not really sure I want to fetch with this yet. Punish for not tar firing, but like, I'd like to use my tar fires for, for good. I do think I want to tar fire myself at the end of my turn if my opponent doesn't do anything. Because now I've got everything under control. What do we got here? Eldrazi Displacer. That card is annoying. Now I don't think I'm gonna tar fire myself because I don't want to like expose my red source. This is gonna kill this. I think I'm just going to untap and then terminate this. I guess now I can go get Overgrown Tomb, push this, go get Tarmogoyf. Or I could get Grimflare. Yeah, Grimflare is better. So let's go get Overgrown Tomb. Because we're not going to be able to cast this Tarfire. Or this turn, as the game stands here. Overgrown Tomb. Get this with a Volt. Go get Grimflare. And we're even insulated against Tide Hollow Skuller next turn because. I can, um, I can collect a brutality, the Tide Hollow Skuller, if they don't, if they take the Grim Flare. So like, we're pretty good no matter what. We're again, we're gonna protect our red sources in our deck, fetch them when we need to. Shamble, shamble, shamble everywhere. The little vent that could. All right, we're gonna play our homie. Uh, Bob, Bob Barack Obama, thank you very much for the follow. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that way. All aboard the troll train is followed. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you guys. Y'all are great. Now my opponent doesn't really have good plays. Yeah, see like, we answer that. What could be annoying is if my opponent, I guess, ghost quarters himself and plays an Eldrazi Displacer, but they can't activate the Displacer. There's the temple.
Yeah, now that gets us like Tar Fire and Death Shadow. So now we're going to fetch our red source. My opponent could mess up the top of my deck here. So like they should let me they should let me resolve the trigger. Then Ghost Quarter me. Yeah, they did this all wrong. But you know, you live and you learn. Joke's on you, we got a forest. We want the man, the myth, the legend, the Garmatoid. And I wonder if I I guess there's no sense to just brutalitying to like discard my opponent. They would have played probably a path to exile or a fatal push if they had it. So we played in caves. I don't think I'm even gonna attack with my Death Shadow next turn. Like I'm just gonna play um just gonna attack and then um play Tarmogoyf. It's going to kind of suck if my opponent hits a... Well, that's neat. Now I can just shock myself and then attack. All right, dude. Yeah, opponent's not really... They're just not sequencing right. I mean, they might not know. They might not be, like, really good at playing against Death Shadow. This, that's annoying. Swords to plowshares, but better. And that's all right. I mean, we still we're still gonna like chug in with this Grim Flare. I'd rather them have path the Grim Flare than the Death Shadow. All right. So how does this go bad? You can traverse for another Grim Flare next turn, which I kind of like. Or I can just draw the Veil, which Veil sets up lethal as long as my well it doesn't necessarily because of the Shambling Vent. You have to take two to vent, two to go up. Block takes six. I play Grixis Death Shadow from time to time, OD Show. You can find the YouTube, the archives of it on my YouTube video. I think I have, I think I've got about 15, between 15 and 20 hours of Grixis Death Shadow on there. I do think Jump Death Shadow is better than Grixis. I've played enough of each one of the decks that I think that the Jump deck is just much better. Not much better. Like, it's deck 1A and 1B in the format, in my opinion. So. I think I'm going to go stack this Traverse underneath this Liliana. This Liliana is going to, like, get me out of a sticky situation with, like, a Thought Not Seer. It's also going to, like, my opponent rips a removal, rips a, uh, whatever it is here. Uh, uh, rest in peace, and I can still attack through it with this, um, ooh. I can still attack through it with this, uh, whatever it is. Um, is Tarmo Wife? Bob? So I guess I just Brutality, which they know that I had. Yeah, I mean, that's that's totally legit. Like, I'm not going to fault anybody that thinks that Grixis is the better deck. Like, that's what the stats say, you know? I believe that more people like to play Grixis because um, Snapcaster is a fun card to play with. It is. Snapcaster is like, Snapcaster is just good old gameplay all the way around. And I think people are like skewed because it has such an incredible Junda, Junda, Shadow, Junda Shadow game one. Game one, Junda Shadow like cannot beat Grixis unless you like clear the ways. That's why I like playing three Lilianas. I think having three Lilianas in my deck gives me a chance against Grixis. Excuse me. So we're on the draw, so I don't want my veils, because they're just too slow. I think I'm just going to bring the brutalities to just have more interaction here. But I, I even, I'm not even sure that Grixis is like favored against Jund after sideboard. Like I don't, I actually don't think it's favored against Jund after sideboard because you get Lingering Souls. Now if you play the version of Grixis that splashes Lingering Souls, now you're talking. So I'm gonna leave a thought Grim Flare is a good draw. Good start here. These um it is going to suck 
if these uh, thought seizes get stuck in my hand. And that actually is a pretty good draw because that means we can play this Grim Flare through a uh, through a whatever it is through uh, whatever that dumb card is the one that makes so I can't search. Arbor is really annoying, but Rest in Peace is also really annoying. We're going to take Rest in Peace. Hopefully my opponent trades off this Leon and Arbor in combat. They're probably just going to play this way, sir. Oh, okay. That works too. That's not bad, because now if my opponent does play Eldrazi Displacer next turn, I can um, Tamer Battle Rage through it, I guess. Not really. I mean, I can trade with it, but maybe my opponent will just try to um, try to get rid of this. Or just, they, 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 I don't know, they might just play in such a way where they use their mana effectively. Obviously, my opponent can just path this, which is going to feel pretty bad. So maybe I should have just played, like, not done anything, which also feels kind of mopey. Another cool thing is, if I get my Grim Flare into play, they go Jossie Displacer, I attack with it, and I team her Battle Rage. If these two trade, it gives me Delirium, which just kind of unlocks my deck. I'm going to offer it. I'm going to take this in a second. Yeah, that's just a bad attack for my opponent. Unless they have another one. If they have a follow-up, then it's good. Okay. Oh, that was gas. So now I ditch Teamer Battle Rage, and then I traverse for probably like Tarmogoyf. And if I'm going to traverse, I need to ditch this to give me Delirium. The double path kind of sucks, but alas, it is life. Traverse for Tarmogoyf, then traverse for Death Shadow, or we're going to get ourselves a Ranger. So now, if my opponent doesn't find a way to interact with my hand, or they get another whatever that dumb dude is, another Arbiter, then we're in good shape. So yeah, now we're just going to... Shadow is better than Goyf because they have Rift. Yep, you're right there, Nathan. That's not a bad draw also. So, oh, I should have fetched, though. I should have just gotten the fetch line out of my hand while I had the opportunity to. And now we can play double Death Shadow and Traverse. We can just play three Death Shadows next turn, which is like, whew. My opponent's going to be able to handle one of them. This is why I like Ranger in this matchup so much. Like, it just allows you to bully your opponent. Because, like, now I'm going to put 15 power on the board next turn. 10 of that from Ranger. Is this white? So if I attack, my opponent displaces one, paths another. Yeah, it's still like doesn't matter. So I gotta make sure I have another land in my deck. So I have I only have my basic swamp that I can fetch. Let me just make sure here. I, I haven't played this mana base throws me. I am playing four color. This land this land this deck kind of throws me off a little bit because I don't have the second stomping ground. So I've got one overgrown tomb. I mean, second overgrown tomb, excuse me. So the only black fetch land that I... The only black duel that I have left, they're all in play because I drew the blood grip. I have one swamp. I still kind of want to fetch for it, just in case I get Arbiter. And I, like, have the land at least. Now nah, that seems probably just worse. Fetch, traverse... 
Death Shadow, Death Shadow, Death Shadow. Yeah, so I'm gonna present, I'm gonna clock my opponent for three. If they wanna trade, or if they wanna displace my ranger, whatever. Displacing the ranger wouldn't be terrible, actually, just because you get to take one of them here, but. Oh no, do I have, I have triple black swords, okay. I do need to be a little careful with my life total, but my opponent's going to be sinking. My opponent's going to have to sink their entire turn into, like, not dying very soon. Their path one. And then we, I guess we make path to exile alive, but then this fetch land's dead. Displace one. And then they can go displace and cast High Hollow Scholar and crack me for three, but then they're kind of naked on the on the back swing. Our best draw would be like Teamer Battle Rage or our removal spell for this Eldrazi Displacer. Another good thing about also keeping this fetch land is that it keeps us live to drawing a fatal push to kill this displacer. Yeah, so you are you you speak truths, Nathan. Okay. So I don't know why I opponent's last card. So if I attack with two shadows, I basically should attack with the team. And then play my Bloodstain Mire. They probably go to double block. I crack. They then displace the one they double block. They take eight. Or they trade here. And then they check out my lap. They maybe go like here. Okay, and then they might just respect this being, like, another duel. Because a lot of these decks do play a second Overgrown Tomb. And there's no way that I die next turn because they don't have haste damage in their deck. Like, most of these decks don't play Reality Smasher. So... I guess I should fetch. Just because if my opponent takes five, then any one of these, uh, they have to then block and then display. I guess I can double displace my Death Shadows next turn. So we are kind of in a little bit of trouble. Like, my opponent has to use their entire turn to, like, but they can go like attack me, attack me, attack me. So they have to use their whole turn displacing. So like they do we do need to draw an answer, but they also cannot get too aggressive. Ghost score is not bad for them. It means they they still can displace twice. They can displace twice and kill like my white source if they're worried about Ranger Vios. Or not really Ranger Vios, Lingering Souls. Which would probably be a halfway decent play from my opponent. So we basically, like, we're kind of ahead here because we're time walking our opponent. Like, we're, we're going to die in this. Like, we have two draw steps to answer this, basically. But my opponent has to commit their entire turn now to, like, not dying to this. Yeah, and that does it. So now we attack. My opponent displaces both of these. We push the Displacer, and then next turn, my opponent has to top deck some answer to both shadows. And they can do that if they have Path to Exile and um, if they have Path to Exile plus another Displacer, then we're good. Now, why do you need we need a second White Mana Source? 
I don't think this deck can play, unless you play like Abzan, then you can play the Temple Garden and not play the Stomping Ground. But I think that you need to have your fetch on with a black source. Thirty-four viewers. I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out. Why not do it on their end step? Because I don't want them to draw another displacer. But then I could have done it in response. Yeah, they drew another displacer, which means they still have to chump their displacer away, unless they have unless they have another way to interact. Yeah, I have a fetch land, so I should have I should have um. I guess, like, the only thing that I was worried about was another Displacer, but I could have just done that on the stack. Had they had an Ether Vial, it would have been right for me to, um... They would have had an Ether Vial, it would have been right to, for me to do it there. As long as it wasn't active. Alright, so they don't have a path, which is good. Yeah, I was just playing... Playing, playing at a excessive rate. And checking out what was going on in the world there, but that was 100% the right thing to do. All right. All right, I am going to toss the sponsor page up and run to the bathroom, and then I'll be right back for the last match of the week. All right, back for the last match of the league. Can't wait till I remember. We're gonna, I actually just ordered another dual monitor thing from Amazon. Oh, let me fix this leg here. I need to tighten that up. So that, then I won't have this problem anymore. Can we play standard Merfolk next? Not today, King Argoth, Argoth, Argothus. Um, I've got, I can't rent cards from, uh, can't rent standard cards from Card Herder yet. They're waiting um they're waiting i think i'm gonna go play standard cards on sunday so that's the goal there i want to stream i want to stream a couple decks i've got i definitely want to stream a blue black control deck with the scare of god and then i want to also stream um uh this hand is good as long as we're playing a creature deck so let's hope we're playing a creature deck if we're not playing Creature Deck, I'm just going to send this Tarfire upstairs, send a message. Are we playing against Burn? Maybe? This Tarm is going to be massive. Right off the bat here. Tarfire. So what are we playing against? Are we playing against, like, Sun and Moon? So if we're playing against Sun and Moon, I should, like... I should be an adult and grab my basics. Maybe this Sun and Moon deck's playing Blood Sun too. Now what's Demon of the Dark Schemes? That's the one that Neg twos, Neg twos everything right. All right. 
It doesn't, and then you get energy for it, right? It could be Jeskai. If it is burn, then our hand's pretty good against burn. Chalice on one. That is sad. The good thing is that we can still at least cast our Tarmogoyf, and we can cast Tarfire to pump our Tarmogoyf. So we're going to get basics. We're not going to get mooned out of this game. I'm going to just make sure that I... Yeah, I mean, that card could be good. Stone Rain. Rude. All right, let's cycle this. And now I think I'm just going to go pedal the metal here. Game for six. If... I find, I guess I don't really have any other ways to make Tarmogoyf larger. A Johnny Vengeance, you don't say. The old Tarmogoyf Tapper. The old Land Messer Upper. That's going to be difficult to beat. So we've drawn a couple lands here. Which has been unfortunate, but probably should hold the rest of these lands. Ley line, okay. All my cards that count, that, all my cards that can target you cost one, anyways. My mom always said, if you're opponent, yeah, give or take. Um, we're just gonna pass. Basically drawn to like Tarmogoyfs uh, or Grim Flayers at this point. So who like wakes up in the morning and is just like, this is what I want to do. All right, we're good. We're not going to play through an Assembly Legion. I have beaten this card before, but it, it, it enabled a much better board presence than I have right now. Okay, so against this deck, I would probably want Surgical because it's better than like a bunch of our other cards, like these fatal pushes aren't great. Terminate hits big Gideon, but I think we want to get or be more proactive than that. I could board in like the white cards in order to play a longer game, but they're also playing Blood Moon. No, no Greeks to Shadow after this. I have to go to work. People with a hundred dollars in a dream, that's fair. That is perfectly fair. Definitely want some grudges. Because, like, again, Chalice is how you get wrecked. $100 in Dream will get you Chalice. That, that's accurate. I don't think I just want... I think I want to go like this. I don't think I want Terminate. I think I just want to be, like, super linear. And then hope that they don't have a Ley Line. I think an improvement for this deck that I would want to make is I would want to have a Maelstrom Pulse in my sideboard. It kind of acts as like a pseudo sweeper because sometimes you can get like a two for one out of it and it's also good just randomly. It's nice to have an answer to Karn after it resolves, especially if you're not playing blue spells. Now chalices are still wicked expensive online. With my, with my subscription, I can't play any chalice deck and I can't play any... Yeah, I can't play a chalice deck. <coughs> okay, so we're going to submit this. I don't really want anything else. So this hand is not good. We can't even keep this because my opponent has a ley line and I've just mulliganed to five with four lands. This hand is not much better, but it's at least a redraw. And I mean, that's a threat that doesn't get messed with. Yep. Yep. 
We'll hold this fetch land just in case we draw a bobble. Chalice is only 30 tickets. I thought Chalice was many more tickets than that. All right, so let's... And again, we're gonna basic it up. We don't have a Death Shadow, so like, there's no need to really murk ourselves here. Should've fetched again. Yeah, punished. Should've fetched again, because we were guaranteed using our mana. Which is sad. All right, let's hope. Grimflare, take me to the promised land. I mean, hopefully they just curb stop the tower. You, you speak facts. You speak facts, my friend. All right, whatever. You can go moon yourself. Two, three. I don't think I want any of these cards. Because it also turns on Delirium. So now we go get ourselves a big man. We could get another Grim Flare. So what is this? Tarmogoyf is five, six, nine. I guess it's sa sh it shaves the turn off the clock. So we are going to get ourselves a Garmatoif. If only we had another green source. Yeah, Rest in Peace would blow. At least they had to use a Simeon Spirit Guide to do that. Rip. So I'm going to check my top card before I bobble. Because I might want to bobble into that. So maybe I should have gotten Grim Flare, like... But... Moon, Leyline, and Rest in Peace. This is a lot of middle fingers. Yeah, Tarma Life is not a big boy anymore. Cast this on my opponent's turn, just or bobble myself, just in case they have, like, I don't know, a random Thought Nuts here. I don't know. There's just no need for them to see that I kept a Grim Flare on top. All right, Chalice on one. Joke's on you. I got two drops. Send send the little man in. A little cute little Grim Flare. Yeah, Grim Flare's a little cutie. This is another reason why I sort of wanted like a Hazret. God, that Street Wraith has got my name written all over it. Or this Tomb of Battle Rage, excuse me. I should have kept the, the Street Wraith also. Because I could Wraith. I just wasn't thinking there. I was so excited about, like, Rage potentially fixing, like, a clock. So I always got to hope there's no Wrath. But I definitely should have kept the, the, the Street Wraith. Golden Rain. All right. I probably should like thought seize myself last turn too. God, we're all over the place. I think this is better than a random draw. Because like we're not drawing what are we drawing to? So surgical doesn't do anything actually. So we have to target a card in the graveyard. Yeah, Johnny Vengeant would be would be the real bad one. So Is it time to th I can't thought seize myself anyways. Oh yeah, Chalice on one. Chalice on one. Elspeth. Elspeth. I think we're just gonna ignore Elspeth. And we're just going right at my opponent. Cause we do get we do get around. We do like we can team her battle rage next turn. Cause this is four. I assume my opponent takes it. 
I'm pretty sure this game is a recipe for disaster at this moment. Alright, Grudge does something, so we're going to keep Grudge on top. Because I can go Grudge. And then, like, maybe do something with it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, sometimes that's, like, just your out. You know what I mean? So now my opponent can put two blockers in front of Grim Flare, trade with the Grim Flare. Then I'll probably just team or battle rage that one. So it still gets in. I actually love that aspect. Why? It's not real. Get out of here. Tarfire, where are you at? We got Tarfire in this deck still? Yeah. So we just dig into Tarfire. I think we're just digging the Tarfire. Like Tarfire is just gonna take me to the promised land. Dude, we only have like 21 cards in our deck left. And, and we have two tar fires. So here's a question. Do I grudge now? No. Do I have I played land yet? Yeah, I think I grudge now. Thought sees my Tarmogoyf away. Just to get closer to casting Death Shadow. Or does like that even matter? I guess I should, like, there's not real. I don't really think there's a point to doing it, but, like, such is life. Like, what else am I going to do? Nothing. I can't take him home with me. What if my opponent plays a batter skull? Okay. If my opponent plays a batter skull. That would be sad. Keep it for bridge? Yeah. I was thinking of bridge or batter skull. Come on. Come on. Get into the trials. Doesn't do it. Well, actually, it does. God damn it. Because it gets an emblem. All right. So. Now. What do I do? I send both these a Gideon. I send both a Gideon. Kill Gideon. And then we're in the same spot we're in next turn. Yeah. Gideon the Trials is a problem. So we're going to send both these a Gideon the Trials. Because Gideon the Trials even turns off um, Tarfire isn't out. So here's a question. Do I send one and one? No, that's bad because then my opponent plus, like they just block. No, they, they just block this one. This goes to two. They then plus and I can't get it off the board. So we gotta attack them with both. Yeah, I think we're going, we're sending both of them at game. Yeah. We're just making sure, you know, we're just, we're just looking over our potential lines because we're really digging for a tar fire. Grixis would not have done anything this game because of Chalice 
and rest in peace. So let's let's not play the whatever the different decks do game. Yeah. Yeah, see like that's that's just not like that's not helping. That's not like proving any you know, that's not giving any important that's not adding anything to it. You're just making like statements about a deck. You know what I mean? Like you're not you're not saying like I think Grixis is better than this matchup because it plays through Rest in Peace and Chalice better because of X, Y, and Z. You know? Powerfire. Yes. So we're gonna attack we're gonna attack my opponent first. Yeah, we do have to kill the chalice. Didn't even need it. Didn't even have to show them. Should be Shadow, not Team of Battle Rage. I don't know. I'm a ragey kind of guy. Like, you know, I, I'm an angry soul. I'm an angry soul. My wife hates me. All right. Um, surgicals were god awful there, but like, is surgical okay? Like, if I get to a thought seize something and surgical it, that's probably okay. I mean, I don't know what else I bring in. Like, these fatal pushes don't seem great. Terminate does kill Big Gideon. Fulminar Mage attacks. Oh, Tarfire doesn't even do it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. We all missed that. All of us missed that. Welcome to Magic While Streaming. And I think that, like, I'm not, I'm not like, a good enough streamer yet to, like, bring in Fulminar Mage because it's castable does sound okay. What do we cut? Do we cut some discard spells? Maybe we just cut the Whispers of Emrakul because, like, you know, that's probably not going to get there. No, I was totally, like, off of it. I was talking with the chat, kind of just, like, tuned out of this game because it was stupid. And I was like, God, I'm going to tar fire through that ley line sanctity so hard. That's one of the hard things about streaming is, like, obviously I'm looking to hang out and have a good time. There are some streams where, like, I don't interact very much and I just go, like, pedal to the metal. But most of the time, those we, we don't do those streams here usually. Yeah, why not Lightning Bolt or Tar Fire? Tar Fire is two types for Delirium. Oh, wow. Nothing so far. What is this? Simeon Spirit Guide Chalice. Game over. This is how my opponent chooses to play Magic. <coughs> um... So I probably still cast this Thought Seeds because it's going to fill my graveyard up to make my Tarmogoyfs larger. Yeah, no Delve cards because of Tarmogoyf. No need to cast that one. What they do with that scry there? They put a card on the bottom, which is good. All right, this Liliana is going to take me to the promised land, right here. My opponent's not going to draw lands the rest of the game. They're not going to draw Leyline of Sanctity, and I'm just going to like. Completely wreck their face. Let me tell you what. If we ever get this chalice off the board, my opponent's in deep. 
deep trouble. So I'm going to just thought seize because swamp is like blood moon insurance. Just making so I don't have another card to deal with. So they ditched an assemble legion. Alright, might as well. We could hit Ancient Grudge. Temple Triumph. So am I just discarding the Swamp and being like, to hell with Blood Moon? Because like the Liliana theoretically is going to answer it before it comes down. Yeah, Assemble is usually like one of their alternate win conditions. I think I'm just discarding. So in all reality, so here's like two shadows is going to be enough to win me this game. So maybe I don't need a third one. We just want to be able to play around, play through a Blood Moon so that if we get like a weird setup that we can still fight through it. I think it's like better to just ditch a Death Shadow and keep this hand here. But then we're even in more trouble to like a Wrath of God. Because if we have this swamp, our Liliana split is going to be easier if they have a blade. So then it's the odds of like, so they're drawing Temple of Triumph. They basically have two draw steps to find Blood Moon. This is like tough. And I think it's little things, so I don't think it really matters. And I think I'm just gonna discard this Death Shadow. Which, like, could be very wrong. And maybe what I should have done is I should have just discarded the bobble and not given myself a redraw. There's a snaring bridge, which is nice to get rid of. Okay, so there's there's a Garmatoid. There's a temple we knew about. So let's see what this scry is. We need to just basically hope that one of their two last cards isn't Leyline of Sanctity. Put a card on the bottom. Johnny Vengeance. So that means our last card's Leyline of Sanctity. Because they would have just cast that Johnny next turn and then Helix my my duder. Chandra, that's bad too. So now I just nug this. So now we need Ancient Grudge. In a bad way. Now, I don't think I'm just casting this Tarmaloif yet. A little bit of monkey business. I was going to say we found a grudge, we were in it, but now we need to go runner, runner. And we're going to fight a little longer, but... But it does not seem very good and we don't have we can't even there's no sense in playing this time away because we don't play enough up to k in this deck they probably cast that which is okay <clears throat> there's another rest in peace another chalice yeah so that's that's game We basically needed them to not hit this, or Leyline, but... Alright, so I'll go back to the deck, talk about what I think a little bit about it, and then probably call it for today. So let's go back over here. So, I think you want a Maelstrom Pulse in the sideboard. Maybe we want a Pulse somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I'm still not sold on these. Like, if I could guarantee cast this with Delirium on turn two every game, then, like, I'd be all about it. But, it's just, like, I'm still, the jury is still out on this. Like, 
maybe it's worth having this be a Hazret, this be a Liliana. Or we can have it be like another push and a, another Liliana or like a discard spell right here, maybe. Maybe like a Colagon's Command. But I really don't like Colagon's Command in these, in these Jun version of Death Shadow. I much, much more like it in like the... Um, the... Grixis, or the Grixis version of the Death Shadow where you can get back a another one. Where you can get back a whatever it is, a snap case. But, but I'm going to call it for today. I'm going to send you guys over to someone else. And I appreciate everyone for being here and I hope everyone has a good rest of their day. You can check out all the archives from this stream on YouTube. So thank you and see all you guys later.